when you're creating an illustration for a scientific journal, a publication, book, or conference, maybe even just a student dissertation, then Adobe Illustrator is possibly the best way to do this. Now, it'll give you great flexibility to show what you really want to show rather than what the software will let you show. Uh, for example, Windows, Smart Art's great, but it's not that great. But it also gives you a really crisp, professional output. So the illustration will look its best, and you can give it at whatever resolution of file type the journal or book is asking for. So it's a really great option. Now, you can spend years learning how to use software, but today we're going to go over just a really simple structure of a model. So in this example, we've done some research, and we're running structural equation modeling, and I'm now going to make the model that gives the structure. If none of this makes sense, don't worry, stay with this, because the lessons you learn in how to make simple models and simple graphics here, you can apply to almost any situation in any level, from undergrad, even high school, up to professor um, journals. So, here we have um, Adobe Illustrator. This is Illustrator CC, so the latest version. Your version might vary from this, but the function should be the same. So, we're gonna click on New, and we get to choose what sizes. I don't worry too much at this uh, point, but I always select um, A4 and go for uh, portrait. The reason I do this is because I know that if I make the illustration fit the width of the page, it'll fit perfectly in there. So I can see roughly how it'll look on the page when we're finished. I'm going to give it a title, so example SEM, and OK. What we're presented with now is a blank sheet, just a piece of paper. Uh, one thing that's worth remembering is that Illustrator works on vectors, which means that there's maths defining the lines rather than pixels. If you think of old Super Mario from the 80s or 90s, then he was all pixelated like um, blocks. This isn't like that, it's a straight line. The benefit of doing this is that when you've got vectors, you can scale it up to any size you like. So even though I'm making it size A4, I can scale it up to the size of a wall without any problem at all. You can't do that with pixels. Anyhow, so what I do, I'm going to make my basic boxes. Now, on the left here, I've got a few options of how to do different tools. I'm not going to go into all of them, but I'm going to select this one called the Rectangle Tool. So click there and go to your sheet of paper left click and drag out with your finger still on the left mouse button. Go to whatever size you want, I'm gonna go for that one, and release. Now, right now it's giving us the selections, which means something's there. I then select on the selection tool, which is the black arrow, and click away, and you can see that a box is there. Now, if I want to change the size or thickness of this line, I select it, go to here, which is the stroke, and I can get make it thicker, or thinner. Also, I can change the colour with stroke here, but I'm going to keep it black for today. Now, my model I'm making is going to have three of these boxes, so I'm going to take this and hold down the left mouse button, drag, and then hold down the Alt key, so I'm holding an Alt and left mouse. Take it to below, you'll see that when I take it below, this pink line appears which says, hey, if you stay with me, then your box will be exactly below the one above, so it's in line. I quite like that, so I'm gonna get to about there, release the left mouse button, my finger right now is still on the old key, I now release the old key, and it's copied. If you don't keep your finger on the alt key, if, so if you release the alt key before the left mouse, it will not copy, it'll just move the shape. Do it one more time, so, Select, Alt, Copy, and let's put this one, I don't know, let's put him up here. So he's in line, works, and there too, and release. So I've made three boxes. I want to give them some names now. So on the left here, the text tool, select that, and I'm just gonna click, oops, <laughs> undo that. I'm just gonna click there. Now, if I clicked anywhere on the page, doesn't matter where, I'm going to say uh, factor 1. It's very small right now, so I hold down the left mouse button, drag it over the top, and up top here we have options what to do with the font and the size. I'm going to make this nice and big, 
size 30 in this case looks good and the font I can choose anything I like not Comic Sans um, I'm going to choose Helvetica new just regular I like Helvetica it's quite a nice font and just drag this into the box there so I'm going to copy that text once again so select alt drag release select alt drag release now I'm going to take my text tool and just select over there and you're going to left click and drag over the number so we've now got three factor boxes so how do we do some arrows quite simple we take the line tool from the side click and go to the end point of the box there click drag so, so right now my left mouse button is still held down and dragging it over the pink lines there I'm touching the next box so the next box gone blue release mouse button and there we are now one thing I've noticed here which you gotta be careful of is at the top here we've got these two boxes and they've got two red lines through what this means is that no cover has been selected so before I get rid of selected anything else I'll try and copy this line drop down the stroke which is the second one select black and give it some thickness now let's do it again line tool the top here drag and release and let's go for a third one from this call from this part here to there. Okay, drag and release. So I've got my lines, I now want to add some arrows. Now, you don't need to know about factor analysis or uh, structural equation modeling for this, but I want to, but in structural equation modeling, these are lines of influence. So factor one influences factor three, factor two influences factor three, um, factor one and two influence each other. So we show this with arrows. So to add the arrowheads, click on one of the lines. I'm gonna choose this one and click on the stroke there. See what it says, where it says stroke, click on that. And now you have the option to add, to change um, a few parts, so we can make it dashed, but we don't want to. But we've got arrowheads here, so we click at the start and put an arrowhead on. You can see that here, an arrowhead has appeared on the start of the line. I don't want that for this case. I want just going from one to three. So let's choose an arrow. Eh, arrow one's quite nice. Click on the next line. So between one and two. Stroke, I want arrows on both. So I just select arrows for both. Click out there somewhere in the white. Click on the third one. I'm going from number two to number three. So I click on stroke, uh, end piece, arrow one. And there we have the arrows all going in the right place. I want some line to, I want text to go on the line to say what hypothesis this is. So again, text tool, just click. If, right now, if you click to close the line, it'll actually say directly in place of the line, so you don't really want that. So just click somewhere out there, it's called H1. Select that, let's make it smaller. Size 20 sounds nice. Let's drag this just above there. I can then hold down Alt, left click and drag, let's copy it, left click and drag, let's copy, and I can call this H, H2, I can call this one H3. So I've now made my model a very basic one, but you can use these tools to make more complex interactions. One thing I want to do is make sure that the background of the image is closer to the actual thing we've drawn. So you take here the artboard tool, select that, and it works just like the cropping tool in other software. So bring it down, bring this round to there. Okay, and then we'll click out somewhere else. Saving it is always a good idea because you will often go back and change. So save, and then just click the save button. Now you've got lots of options here on save, don't worry about them, just click OK because the defaults are actually pretty good. So we've now got um, our um, illustration. I want to save this and put it into my work. This is very easy to do in Illustrator. So file, save from Microsoft Office. Straight away, you click on that. It says where do you want to save it, so desktop, SEM example, 
file type PNG, perfect, click save. That's gonna give you the defaults. Now, if you want to go for something more advanced than that, so if you're doing a journal article and they say, we want exactly this resolution, very easy. File, export, oops, file, export. Are we gonna choose um, PNG? Click on export, uh, uniform, there. And it gives us some options. So usually for printing, they'll say not 300 PPI, so pixels per inch. But if you're just using it for a presentation, then 72 on screen is absolutely fine. So I'm going to stay with 300 and click OK. So the only difference between save for office and say on the export is that it gives you those options. Either path is perfectly fine, but frankly, when I'm doing my work for Microsoft Word, so writing the first draft report, I just use export to Word because it's faster. So anyhow, I'm going to minimize this. And we see on my desktop, I've got lots of files, but there's this one, which is the first one. And there we are. So all we to do now is create a um, new Word document. Bring this across there. I managed to hide it behind that. So let's go on here. Now, I'm going to type something stupid. There it is. Just drag that file into your document, and there it is. To finish it off, I can right-click, insert caption, figure one, SEM, example. Click OK. And in the text here, semicolon on C, insert, cross-reference, figure, figure one, only label number. OK. Save that. <laughs> so anyway, that is how to use Adobe Illustrator to create simple but effective and professional illustrations for your student work, for your book, for your um, journal article, or anything you're creating. It's a wonderful tool and really worth the time getting to know it because I use it constantly for my academic work and my teaching. So have a go. If you have any problems or want to know anything else, write in the comments of this video and I'll get back to you with a video response.